equal your t. T equal area still F E. Your C equal 0.85 F prime C A. But your width will be your P flange. The total width of your flange. Can you watch this one? It is your beam. That's fine. Your neutral axis within your flange. At the top, we have Compressive stress block. This value 0.85 F prime C. This little depth A with the total depth C. Do you agree? If you would like to get your equivalent compressive force, do you remember this value? This value equal volume of this shape. What is the volume here? 0.85 F prime C. Time. This width, which is called B flange, not this width. So time B flange, time this little distance A. We have a steel reinforcement at this location. So we can expect tensile force equal area steel type F yield. Just a quick comparison. If your cross section is rectangular cross section, we have a neutral axis. I don't care where. At the top part, we have compressive stress block. Looks like this. This value point eight five F prime C. This width is the same like this width. So B width or B width. That's fine. And this one is A. Your distance C. Uh, I'm sorry. Your compressor for C equal point eight five F prime C time B time A. This is the only difference. But. If your assumption is correct, your neutral axis within the flange, then your compressive force equal your tensile force. The only unknown in this equation is your distance A. <coughs> Once you get distance A, you can get your nominal moment in a very simple way. Then multiply your nominal moment time phi. Uh, you can get your uh, design moment. Remember the distance in between d minus a divided 2. So your nominal moment will be area steel times F yield times this distance d minus a divided 2. Multiply your nominal moment by phi. Most of the time your phi will be 0.9. Based on what is the value of epsilon tension. What this value is. Epsilon t. Anyway. Let's do a, a, an example. Yeah, uh, we assumed <coughs> your neutral axis falls in the flange. From this value, you can calculate C. Beta 1 C equal A, so you can get C. C must be smaller than or equal H flange. This distance C the depth of your neutral axis must smaller than the total thickness of your flange. Let's do an example and see what will happen. <coughs> I 
Are you sleepy? What's the point? Uh, we have T section, we have T section, and we would like to determine what is the design strength. Design mode, K M N. A T beam with concrete 4000 psi steel reinforcing grid 60. The beam has a span, this beam has a span. A span equal 30 feet and is cast integrally with 4 inch thick the thickness 4 inch slab the clear distance between web uh, webs is 50 inch if you have a cross section this beam is repeated many times many times many times the distance between this web and this web center to center 50 inch before starting to design any T section what is the value of your B flange what is the value of the flange of the slab that is working with your beam B flange your beam is edge beam or intermediate beam do you have a slab from one side or both sides? So it's intermediate, not edge. So your B flange may be, your span divided 4, may be 16 H flange plus B web, may be center line to center line. I don't know which one, the smallest one. Span divided 4, your span length of this beam, 30 feet time 12, to be an inch, divide four. Your value will be 90 inch. 16 T slab, which is four inch, plus P web, this distance, 10 inch. Your value will be 74 inch. Your distance from center line to center line, this beam is repeated every 50 inch. So from this center line to this center line will be 50 inch. What is the smallest value for all three? Your B flange will be 50 inch. So this distance equal 50 inch. This is the first step. Second step. Do you have any question related to this point? It's very simple, very, very simple. Second point, very good story. Hey, I will assume my neutral axis within the flange. At distance, C. So, above your neutral axis, we have stress block. <coughs> <coughs> we have stress block 0.85 F prime C with depth equal A, a little bit. Uh, less than C and we can assume compressive force capital C and at this location in between the two rows we have tensile force T for a chromium your capital C equal T so 0.85 F prime C, B flange A equal area steel time FE. Remember this stress on the width. 50 inch. So, what's your number? 0.85 F prime C 4000, as you like. Give it 4,000, that's fine. 
B flange, 50 inch. Your distance A, I don't know. Equal area steel. Your area steel is six, the time uh, number nine. Your area steel six inch square. Six time F yield 60,000. Great 60. So I can get distance A. What is the value of A? Inch. Okay, A equal beta 1 times C. A equal 2.12 <coughs> equal beta 1.85 times C. What is the value of C? 2.5. inch. Anybody <coughs> can tell me what is the meaning of C? which is depth of your neutral axis equal 2.5 inch. That means your neutral axis is within your flange. Because the total distance here, four inch. And from your calculation, your C value equal 2.5 inch. That means your neutral axis within your flange. I am right, keep going. If not, we will go to the second situation next time. Okay, so your nominal moment will be area steel times F yield <coughs> times distance in between the two forces, which is D minus A divided 2. D minus A divided 2. That's all. Area steel, 4 or 6, I think 6. Time 60, 1,000. Time depth, total depth 24. Minus A, divide 2. 2.12, divide 2. You can figure out what is the value of your nominal moment. Add phi to your nominal moment. You can get your design moment. So I think this situation looks like exactly like rectangular cross section with only one thing must be changed. Your B flange is used for the compressive force in concrete. One question. What will happen if your C value here equal five inch? That means at distance five inch, we can expect your neutral axis. That means all of your calculation must be changed to the second situation. Any questions so far? We are done for today for concrete. We will continue next time. Uh, after exam one, just uh, to let you know, after exam one this Friday for complete, we will talk about design of coal, concrete coal, and design of slab. Actually, we have different type of slab, many different types. Uh, because we are talking right now all of this time for beams, only for beams. <coughs> Column is nothing. <coughs> and also, I forget, beams under shear. All of our calculations for beam under moment. What about beam under shear? So we have three things after exam one. Beam under shear, design of column, design of slab. After we are done with all of this stuff, beam under shear, design of column. For design of a slab, we will talk about what type of slab and everything. And we will talk about software called Riza 
flow. Actually, there is a software, another kind of Risa 2D. You can draw your beam, your slab, your column, and let the program solve for everything. The program will tell you what is the moment of, in your slab, what is the reaction of, in your column, what is the moment and the shear in your beam. Can tell you everything. Actually, it can also design, can tell you how much is steel reinforcement in your slab, how much is steel reinforcement in your beam according to ACI. So can do everything, but we need first to understand what's going on and then what will happen if you use a software like RISA. Uh, remember, RISA 2D only, just only doing structure analysis. But RISA floor, actually we have another kind of RISA, many products. Uh, RISA floor, no, it's not structure analysis. It's structure analysis and the design also can tell you how much steel reinforcement do you need in your element. Okay, any question? Any 